Hello and welcome. These are the topics which we are going to cover in this lecture. We are going to look at statements. What are the different types of statements offered by the C language? Then there is a type of statement known as if else, which is used to to make decisions in the C language. Similar is switch case, which is based upon cases. Okay, starting off with statements. We know what a statement is. A statement is nothing but a part of a program that does something, that conveys some meaning. So that is a statement. There are a lot of, uh, there are other type of statements. The most common type of statement is console input output. Console I.O. Console input output means, you know what a console is, the, the black screen when you run your program you a, a black screen appears so that is a console and when you input an output from it that is called console IO statements those statements are all console input output like printf or scanf there are selection statements selection statements uh, selection statements are nothing but they include decision control What do you mean by decision control now? Let's say you have two, three, let's say you have two statements and based on some condition you have to execute either statement one or statement two. So here comes making decision. Now these selection statements are used for decision control. Then comes iteration. Iteration. Iteration statements are nothing but loops. They are looping statements. When you need to execute some some statements again and again, so you employ iteration statements, which are nothing but loops. And there occur jump statements. Jump statements are used to transfer the control from one part of a program to another to jump from one part of a program to another part of a program now let's see what is console output then we'll see console input so we have been using the most common function for console output yes you guessed it correctly it is printf printf the function now you know what a printf is we have seen the format of printf in previous lectures also. Let us quickly review that format so that you remember it more perfectly now. A printf, when you call printf to do your work, what you pass? You pass the first parameter, a combination of text, right? Text, format specifiers. Format specifiers and there are some special characters known as escape sequences. This is new. We'll go through it in a while. Escape sequences. And then you have a list of variables. List of variable. So this is the format of printf. We know this format very well. Now let us look at format specifiers. Format specifiers we have a lot of format specifiers. Let me list all of them and then we'll go through it through them one by one. We have percent %i, we have percent %d, then we have percent %f and percent %c. So what do percent %i mean? Percent %i means an integer, right? We have used it so do percent %d. So you can use percent %d or percent %i interchangeably. Percent %f is for floating points and percent %c is for characters, right? Now there are other format specifiers. Let me again list every one of them. There are, there is percent %s. There is percent capital X or percent small x and there is percent o. Let us look at each one of them. What do they stand for? Percent s is for a string. 
Now instead of single character, if you want to print a lot of characters, there is a data structure, there is a structure called an array. So if you have an, a, a list of characters, an array of characters, that is nothing but a string. Now for printing a string, you use percentf. We'll let you know what a string is in later lectures. For now remember that percentf is for string. Now you know that we are in a decimal number system. We have 10 fingers, so we have 10 numbers, 0 to 9. And combining these 10 numbers, we form a number system. There is other, another type of number system known as hexadecimal number system, wherein they have 16 numbers. They start from 0 to 9, and after that, A, B, C, D, uh, E, and F. So they have 16 numbers, 0 to 9, 10, and A to F, 5, A to F6, so 16 numbers. So such type of number system is called hexadecimal. And to represent hexadecimal you use percent capital X or percent small x. It just converts this integer into hexadecimal and displays it. Similar to hexadecimal there is octal wherein that number system has only 8 digits. 8 symbols to represent numbers 0 to 7 so this is for octal percent o is for octal now enough with format specifiers here let us look at ex escape sequences what are escape sequences escape sequences now escape sequences are nothing but special characters. They are special characters. Like what are special characters? Like tab, tab or new line. When you press enter you actually enter a special character known as a new line. So these are special characters if you want to if you want to print special character you use escape sequences now let us look at what are the different types of escape sequences as I said escape sequences are used to print special characters so you have a new line character a tab character to print a new line you use backslash n to print a tab you use backslash t remember that this is a backslash for backspace backslash b for backslash if you want to print a backslash so you have to use two backslashes because if you use one backslash it will confuse the compiler or the printf function that is this an escape sequence or a backslash for a single quote you have to use backslash single quote for double quote backslash double quotes and there are many more other escape sequences supported by the C language now escape sequences always start with a backslash remember we used the new line character in our previous lectures to go to the next line and any escape sequence is considered a single character although it contains two characters but the C language considers the escape sequence as a single character so remember that it is enclosed in single quotes right any character any single character is enclosed in single quotes now how do you use escape sequences escape characters so let's say you have printf my name is John and before John you have backslash n now how will be printed the output is as shown my name is and once it encounters a backslash n it goes to new line so new line and then John. Let's take another example. Printf the price is backslash t 500. Now backslash t is a tab character. So you guessed it correctly that there is a tab space wherever it finds backslash t. Printf hello backslash b backslash b backslash b. Now backslash b is for backspace so let's see the output he man so we have hello and then three backspaces so it goes back it deletes o deletes l and deletes 
another L. So he and then prints man. So the L L O is omitted and then man is printed in place of that. For a single backslash you have to use two backslashes because if you use a single backslash like in this my name is backslash n john if you use a single backslash the compiler the printf will confuse itself that the number the 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 letter following the backslash is a is an escape character so you have to use two backslashes backslash single backslash for two you get one if you want to use a single quote then also you have to precede that with a backslash so the output will be this name guru if you have printf programming so you have to use a backslash and double quote for a single double quote because if we use just double quote it will end that string right so this is how programming is printed okay now comes console input we have the most popular function for console input as scanf right we have used scanf let us quickly review the format of scanf so to call scanf we write scanf and then we pass it as the first parameter format specifiers format specifier and then we pass a list of variables list of variables as the subsequent arguments as the subsequent parameters but we not only pass it the format specifier and a list of variables actually it needs addresses of variables so we have to precede every variable with an AND operator so that it gives the address okay let us take this example of scanf scanf person d we have to print and we have to take input an integer so we have used person d instead of person i both are same so used person d and address of n so we have to take input and put that value into the variable n so let us analyze each part of this scanf so this person d is nothing but a format specifier as we know person d or person i for int person f for float person c for char and other format specifiers which we have discussed can also be used this and is an address of operator it gives the address of variable in the memory right a variable needs space and wherever in the memory it is allocated the space and operator gives the address of that space of that memory allocated and scanf always needs the address of variables it is a common mistake that people drop the AND operator but always use AND operator while you use scanf it needs addresses it does not need the variables value or the variables name now one thing which is very important is that within these double quotes the first parameter no text is allowed only you are permitted format specifiers we have drawn this we have written this that in double quotes you have format specifiers no text so if you write scanf enter the number and percent i that is wrong it can take multiple inputs scanf can take multiple inputs if you write scanf percent i percent e, percent c you can have multiple format specifier which means that it will take multiple multiple inputs from the user so scanf percent i percent c and then we take input the value of two variables age and sex okay now let us move on to selection statements if you pay attention to the word selection it means that selection of some statements based on some condition so it selects statements based on condition right now you have two selection statements available in the C language the one is if else construct if this else that and another is switch 
Now let us look at this each each one of these. So first we'll look at if else. Right. So let me draw a flow chart here. Based upon that flow chart we'll explain what is if else. So you have statements you have statements in a program statements then you go on executing statement statements and then you have a choice between two blocks of statements so you have one block s1 and another block s2 you have choice between these two statement blocks if some condition based on some condition and then either execute this or this and then continue with executing other statements other statements right now you go on executing the statements and as the control executes statements sequentially it encounters a condition now here is a condition and your condition is that if this condition is true then execute the statement s1 and then go back to other statements and follow the ladder and if thus this condition is false execute s2 and follow the same path to other statements so you are making a decision between s1 and s2 using if else using a condition let us take the example which we have written earlier we have drawn a flowchart of this example which number is greater a or b let us draw this 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 flowchart for our problem okay this is the flowchart of our problem we start we take input a and b and then we we have a condition is a greater than b so if this condition is true that it is true that a is greater than b we print a is greater than stop if this is false which means that b is greater if a is not greater than b then b is greater and then stop so let us draw let us write a program for this problem using the if else construct so the first and the foremost thing we have to do is to include the standard input output header to make printf or scanf work so we have hash include hash include scdio.h then our main function void main so first thing we have to do is to declare variables right so int a and b so we are declaring integers a and b right we have declared them now we ask the user to to give us the input so first we ask printf enter a and b and we ask this then the user enters a and b then we scan that input scanf so all our integers so percent i percent i and then we provided the addresses of a and the address of b right we have done this okay now let us go back to a flow chart and try to infer something from that if you look at this it says that if a is greater than b if if means true if a is greater than b then print a is greater else that means if a is greater than b this condition is false we say b is greater so let's try to implement this into our program so we had if if a is greater than b then what we do is we have an if block so the syntax of if else is if and then within parentheses you have conditions a and b then you have the if block so in the if block if a is greater than b then we print then we print f 
what we print f is a is greater right let us make this code aesthetic we enter a new line here then else if the this condition is not true if it's false if the condition is false then the control goes in the else block and in the else block we print b is greater print f b is greater backslash n so this way our program is ready so this is what I got when I run when I ran this program enter a and b let's enter 5 as a and 4 as b so it says that a is greater indeed 5 is greater than 4 so our program is running perfectly so if a is greater than b print of a is greater else b is greater and you must remember that if has a block and there is an else block bounded by these braces now you, you have only one statement in these braces currently but you can have as many statements as you as you want but a question that arises is can you drop these braces and the answer is yes you can drop these braces but the condition should be that if there is only one statement now let's go back to a program and see that if it's only one statement yes there is only one statement so you can drop the braces now this program also works the same as the previous program because we ha as we have dropped the braces we can we can drop the braces if there is only one statement now if you have if num equals to equals to one print f one there is only one statement you can drop it if you write like this if age is greater than equals to sixty if you, you have condition and then you have two statements but you have not used the braces it means that the second statement does not belong to your if block only the first statement belongs to your if block if you have dropped the braces so if you want to include that in your if block use the braces okay now let us quickly review the syntax of the if else construct firstly you write if now if then there is a condition condition if it's true if the condition is true then you execute the statement in the if block execute this statement if this condition is true else what you do is execute another statement in the else block if the condition is not true if the condition is false then execute this statement right this is the usually the syntax of the if else construct uh, one important thing here is that you can drop the else part also you can have only the if part drop the else part because there are situations where you have to execute some statement only if a condition is true you don't have to execute some statements if the condition is false so if such is a case you can drop the else no problem you can drop the else now another question that arises is that can you have if else inside if else so if else inside inside of if else so this concept is known as nested nesting of if else like you have nesting of comments you can also have nesting of if and else let us demonstrate this using a program let's say we have a program that says it is a number to word service number to word service just to give you a slight slight example 
when you input 1 it outputs O N E in words you give it a number it will tell the word of that number so if you have 2 it will say 2 for simplicity we keep this until 5 only so if you have a number greater than 5 it will not give you any answer so 1 to 5 it can give let us now go back to writing this program let's write this program actually so as this is the compiler window remember that remember that we have hash include stdio.h then we have void main now inside this we start our writing our program so first of all we will ask the user printf please enter your number between 1 to 5 first of all we'll title our program let's say we'll print number of number to word service right you have the title then in the next line remember remember we have used a backslash n so in the next line printf will ask him to enter number between 1 and 5 so we have asked the user to enter a number between 1 and 5 then the user will enter a number so we scan that number scan that number it's an integer so percent D or percent I whatever you like and scan that into some variable so let's say we have the variable num so we pass it the address of num oh we haven't declared num so let's declare num int num so it scans num then we check each each time right if the number is 1 we print 1 if else if it is 2 we print 2 else if it is 3 we print 3 so let's put this into working so if num is equal to now here comes relational operator is double equals to if it is double equals to 1 if it is equal to 1 then we print okay, let's put this in if block printf o n e 1 right else else if the number is not 1 what we do is we check that if it is true if again num is equals to 2 again we have the if block so print printf e w o in letters else if the number is not 2 then again in the else part we check if the number is 3 so we go on doing this until we reach 5 printf 3 you see we are forming a ladder of if and else we are nesting if and else 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 if again we check that if it's not 3 it, it must be 4 because we have checked 1 2 and 3 it is not 1 2 and 3 it must be 4 if num is equal to is equal to 4 then print that it is 4 if not print 5 print f 4 so if it is not 4 we assume that it must be 5 so else printf that this is 5 now this is what I've got after running this program it says number to word service enter any number between 1 and 5 so let's say we enter 3 and press enter yes it says 3 so our program is running but the problem here is that after you nest if and else you seem to 
mismatch the if and else look there are so many ifs so many if else and the structure of the program is not pleasing to the eye you have to match braces here this match this brace matches with this brace and so it becomes quite untidy so it is difficult to understand also now to remove these difficulties and this matching of braces which are very difficult there is another construct known as if else if else now let's look at what if else if else is it is used to remove nesting so let's modify this program according to if else if else concept so this is if number is 1 then print 1 else and then inside else we have if so we can combine these if else if num is equals to 2 then we print 2 so similarly else if else if num is equals to 3 we print f3 so this way it gets quite cl cleaner and quite easier to understand if else if else and it makes the program quite tidy and note that we don't have to match so many braces but we remove these braces now our program looks quite simple and if you read this program it does make sense if num is equals to 1 print f1 else if num is equals to 2 print f2 else if num is equals to 3 print f3 and so on so our program is quite simple and good looking now now if you run this program it also runs perfectly similar perfectly the same as the previous one so let's say we enter this time 2 and we got 2 now let's look at the syntax of if else if and else construct so if the condition is true then you have to execute this statement else if another condition is true you have to execute this statement and else otherwise if both the conditions are false you execute this statement now remember that else is also optional in this if in this construct also so you have if else and if else if else two type of if else now if one condition is true if it checked if this condition is true if this is not then it goes to the other else once a condition is true then the other conditions below that below the L, the rest of the else ifs are not checked they are directly skipped similar to a kind of if another else if right that's the case now you can use logical operators in the conditions which you provide to if and else's let's say for checking range let's say we have this program hash include stdr.h void main we have dropped main here for simplicity purposes you have to include void now you ask the user to enter his age and you scan that age you have declared a variable integer age scan that variable age now if his age is less than 18 you do nothing but you print that your minor else if the age is greater than 18 and the age is less than 40 so you are checking a range if the age is between 18 and 40 you print that you are an adult so thus we are checking the range here between 18 and 14 look we have used the logical operator and so it, it just means literally if age is greater than or equal to 18 and age is less than equals to 40 uh, according to the truth table if this comes out to true these two expressions then it will go ahead again we are checking if the range is between the the age is between the range 40 and 60 
then print as middle age else if print retired right so we are combining conditions using logical operators now it is advised to use parenthesis if we take an example if age is greater than or equals to 18 and age is less than 40 now you are checking a range here so if you use parenthesis it, it makes much sense right? and it removes confusion between the programmer if you write a program like this using the upper approach then it is likely to cause problem for other programmers who read your program they might not understand they might not know the priority so they might get confused which will be executed further so normally this is executed further and this is executed further and then these are executed using these are operated using the AND operator so it goes ahead and what you are doing is you are parenthesizing the the expressions right it, it, it is much better and it is not confusing you know now before we look at common fit false let us look at something else which is quite interesting so in C you have two things true or false in logics right and specific to the C language true is always represented by positive or negative values that is non-zero truth right truth is always non-zero and if the a, a, a value if you want to represent false you represent it using zero so now let us look at the common pitfalls in the C language using the if else constructs now a common pitfall is that you use assignment operator instead of the equality operator let's take this example here you have used assignment operator actually you wanted to check that if n is equal to 5 but you have used assignment operator what this statement will do that it will assign 5 to n it will not check the equality between them so what is what it does is n is assigned the value 5 and there is only 5 in if now what we've learned is truth is always non-zero now this is non-zero 5 is non-zero so it is always executed so whenever control passes through this if it is always true so this 5 will always be printed condition becomes always true what to, what to do is nothing but replace the assignment by equality operator another common pitfall is the semicolon after the if statement sometimes what you do is you have correct you have corrected the assignment operator put the equality operator but sometimes you place a semicolon after the if now semicolon is is a semicolon denotes a null value it denotes nothing it denotes an end so it is expanded like this if n is equals to equals to 5 semicolon remember the first statement is always in the if block if you don't use blocks now this 5 print of 5 goes out of the if block it is another some other block now semicolon is null terminator and it is inside if block that this I've told so you should remove this semicolon okay now let's move on to the conditional operator similar kind of similar to if else this is this is an operator it comes under operators section of C a condition conditional operator is denoted by a question mark and a colon now let's see how to use this the syntax is before the question mark you have an expression now if the expression is true the statements before the colon is are executed if it's false if this expression is false 
then the statements after the colon are executed. And remember that you have to put a semicolon after the last statement. Let's take this example. You have put a is less than b. This is an expression. Now if this is true, this expression a is less than b is true, then it will print a is greater. And this, if this is false, it will print b is greater. Similar to if else, but quite uh, quite quite compact, right? Remember that this semicolon is necessary at the last. Here there is no semicolon because this is one single operator, right? one single statement. After the statement you have a semicolon. Now this is equivalent to the if else construct. If a is less than b, print f a is greater. This is true. If this is false else, it goes into else and prints b is greater. And there, this is a ternary operator. Remember, we have in the operators, in the operators lecture, we have defined that if then if an operator has one operand, it is unary. If it has two operands, it is binary. If it has three operands, like this one, one, two, and three, it has three operands then it is a ternary operator. So the conditional operator is the ternary operator. Okay, now let us learn something about cases. What are switch and cases in the C language? Let's go back to our previous program which we have learned, which we have written this if else if else program, this number to service. If number is one, print one. If number is two, print two. What you can observe from this program is that this variable num has cases. It has five cases. One, two, three, four, and five. So let's this let's sum of sum this up. So this variable num it has five cases. Right? One, two, three, four, and five. if its value is 1, if its value is 2, if its value is 3, if its value is 4 and 5. Okay, What you do is if its value is 1 you print 1. We have done this. This is 2, 3, 4 and 5. Now we know that these 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 are cases cases for num now what you can do is select this num take this num and try to determine what cases what are the cases of that num and according to that case execute some statements for this the C language provides you the switch case construct you have the switch case construct let us convert this program using a switch case construct. Now let's remove this. Now remember that the num has to be selected. It has to be switched between the cases. Right. So first thing we do is we write switch. Switch. Which number needs which variable is to be selected? So switch num. And then we have the switch block and write the cases for this num. So we have case 1, we have case 2, case 3 and on and on and on. So I've written all the cases. Now according to these cases we execute our statements. So if the case is 1 we print print f one right and the same with other stuff so this way we can clean up all of our program to some smaller programs and quite easier to understand so num has cases one two three four five 
and based upon these cases we execute statements if the nums value is 1 this statement will be executed if it's 2 this statement will be executed now let's run this program and check what output does this give now let's enter number between 1 and 5 let's enter 5 and it says 5 press any key to one here. now our program has executed correctly for this case for the case 5 let's run this and try it for case 3 if we enter 3 this time look what the magic happens it has printed 3 4 5 so let's go back to our program and try to determine what went wrong so the control was first here it switched num it selected num and then determined if this its case is 1 if its case is 3 if it's if it's 2 or 3 it then found out that the case is 3 so the control went here printed 3 and then came came down printed 4 came down printed 5 and went away so what happened is when a case is selected all the cases below it are also executed why because we have not stopped the control somewhere here after the case we have to stop the control so how do you stop the control you stop it by applying breaks right so we apply a break statement here a break in every case whenever a case gets over we have to apply a break statement so that the control does not go to next cases it goes directly out of the switch here also break now the last case does not need a break because eventually anyways the control is going out of the out of the last case right so no need to apply a break now let's run this program and see if it works or not this time let's enter 4 let's enter 2 and this time it works correctly it has not fallen down the cases okay. so let's analyze the control was here first num has been selected and then it goes to the second case executes printf2 then encounters a break so it does not execute these three statements, these three cases. It goes directly here, out of the switch. Now comes the question of the syntax of the switch case construct in the C language. Now how it's written? Firstly we write switch and then which variable has to be switched. Here only a variable or a constant can be there. It, it can also be an expression. So here some value has to be there inside the switch parenthesis and then you have cases for these values. Inside the cases you should have only constants. Only constants are recommended though you can have expressions but they should not give some arbitrary value. Those values should be constant. So recommended that you should have constants in the cases and remember that you need to break every case you need to come out of every case so that when a case is executed the control does not fall down to respective to the lower cases and one more important thing remains is the default case default can be written anywhere mostly it is written on the lower side of the switch let me put a break here because it should not fall down to default this time the default is right is in the last end is the last case of switch default means if the value of num is not the any of the cases then it will execute default let's say if if the user enters values other than 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we can say that we can ask him that 
please enter a valid value right then backslash n so let's run this program and check whether it works or not now let's enter an invalid value let's enter 100 it says please enter a valid value right so what has happened is that if the value of num is does not lie in any of the cases is it will execute default now default is optional for switch case okay now switch cases have a lot of advantages you can write a menu program a program which involves a menu using a switch, switch case construct in the C language a menu program like this it says it gives us a menu A for multiply B for divide C for exit if you enter your option as A it says multiplying and says thank you so this way you can implement a menu program let us know how we have implemented this program I've already written the program for you you just have to sit back and watch this is a menu program first thing we include standard input output header file then we have, we print our options a b and c multiply divide c for exit and then ask the user to enter his option when he enters his option we scan his input into a character variable now a b and c are characters so we have to input them in character format right so the format specifier we have specified is percent %c and the address of this character variable ch now based on this this character variable based upon its cases which values it can have a b or c we do the printing we do the operations right so we switch the character ch switch ch and then we have the cases capital a capital b and capital C if the case is A we print of multiplying and then break if the case is B we print of dividing and then break if the case is C that means exit we do nothing but return now there is no need of break because the program is exiting then there is no question of the other cases being executed so we just return we return from here to the operating system directly because we are in main so it will be returned to the operating system and eventually the program ends now if the user enters some wrong option so we'll say that invalid option please enter again then at last we say thank you so let us run this program again and see what are the small errors that are that have crept into our program now if I enter capital B right if I enter capital B then our program works perfectly right, right. again after rerunning this program if let's say I enter instead of capital B I enter small b because people tend to use small letters instead of capital letters even though they see the those capital letters so if I enter small b look what happens it says invalid option although I have entered a valid option according to human beings we tend to equate capital B and small b as same so it says but the computer says that it is an invalid option because in the C language capital letters and small letters are different so how to fix this it's so simple I told you that if you do not apply breaks to cases the control falls down to the lower cases so let's use that disadvantage of switch case for as, a, as our advantage look what I write case small a and here I write case small b and for the last case I write case 
small c. So what I've done is I have before the capital A I have written small a case but I have not applied breaks to this upper case which has small a. So whenever the character is when the, whenever the character has value small a the control goes here instead of going here but as it goes here it automatically falls here and then prints multiplying and then breaks so the idea is simple the idea is that when you don't apply breaks the control falls down to lower cases so in this case we have used it and it has been advantageous to us let's run this program and check if this works or not now this is our program let's enter small a and this time it has worked perfectly so this is how you program using the selection statements in the C language we have if else's and we have switch case statements and in my opinion I think these are pretty easy and you can you can create quite large programs using these two constructs so that's all we are done we have this much in this lecture thank you for listening if you have any queries or any questions to ask do email them to this email address thank you